green buildings and green building score principles life cycle assessment green building costs and green building benefits these are the topics we are going to discuss today so when we talk about green buildings can someone tell me what do you understand by green building yes see these classes are to be very interactive because the main reason to do this is that we need to learn the more we get interacted with each other the more we'll be learning moreover this is an online class so you need to be very much saying something or the other so that we know that we are all connected with each other yes can someone tell me what do you understand by green building so like uh, like a, it is more sustainable sir like okay. when we so any difference our... between green building and sustainable building sustain uh, like sustainability is towards like uh, like how to say like where we use more eco friendly and which is friendly beliefs and when it come for green building like it is more towards the technology and to the people where uh, like nowadays green building it has been more towards the technology also like that than sustainable mm -hmm. okay so okay no problem you will be getting a better answer in this course so first topic will be why green buildings if you see it is a very legitimate question or the other way to ask is why not green buildings because why green building is now an old question now the question that has to be asked to the developers to the construction firms to the architectural firms are why not go with green buildings often an answer to a question is actually normally understood better when you are presenting it in the reverse order like instead of asking why green building let's make it a reverse why not green building now this should be the question that should be asked to all who are involved into the real estate sector into the construction field as you can see that simply a conventional building methods are not sustainable that is why there was need to come up with parameters the guidelines which can be called as a green building guidelines because our conventional buildings construction techniques designing methodologies designing improvisation and all were not that up apt that is why these guidelines and come up they use too much of energy our conventional buildings actually use too much of energy create too much of waste and are not conducive to acceptable level of satisfactory occupant health and comfort yes in a conventional way we actually do not give that much of consideration into the factor of health and comfort level of the occupants who are going to be there in the dwellings and the spaces a lot most of the thing spaces are closed ones so we need to take care of these things in a cumulative impact of the design construction and operation of the building environment has profound implications for human health the environmental and the economic with conventional development and construction practices like clearing of land for development often destroys wildlife habitat when we are going in a very conventional ways now it can be called a rough way of doing the things because it does not follow any parameters to sustain the wildlife the habitat already existing on your site because whatever you do on your site is actually disturbance to the nature nature is always in its purest when it is having all the biodiversity the habitat wildlife on it that is actually nature coming up with a small building block is like hampering the nature so what we designers we construction field persons do is actually we deteriorate the nature 
And what green building actually does is that it does not say that we will conserve the nature 100%. But yes, it tends to minimize the negative impact on the environment through your design and construction methodologies, through your equipment, improvised equipment, a difference into your equipment performance and all. Through these things, green building guidelines makes a drastic impact, a drastic change into your complete environment. Extracting, manufacturing and transportation of material contribute to the pollution of water and air the release of toxic chemicals and emission of greenhouse gases. Your extraction of materials for your construction, most of the materials are extracted. They are then manufactured. In the manufacturing process, you need lots of energy. Transportation needs lots of energy. All these things, cumulative ways, they contribute a lot to your pollution especially into the range of water and air pollution when we talk about. So we will be trying through our green building guidelines to minimize these negative impacts onto our water and air especially. Building related transportation contributes to a wide range of impacts associated with vehicle use, energy consumption and harmful environmental effects. Many of this material that we use in our construction field are having very high embodied energy. The more the embodied energy is, the bigger the negative impact of that material is on our environment. So what we tend to do is, we tend to move towards the materials which have less embodied energy. We cannot 100% eliminate these things, but yes, what we can do is we can reduce these things, reduce the negative environmental impact. This is basically, when we talk about green buildings, it is about the environment and the dwellers who are going to dwell inside, let it be an office, let it be a home. Mostly it is closed. You don't have a very open office. You don't have a very open house. So all these things are closed. So these two basic things are going to be countered into this complete course. In the US, conventional buildings accounts for a high portion of resources used in waste generation. Like 14% of portable water consumption is done through the buildings. 30% of the waste output is done coming out from the buildings. 38% of the carbon dioxide emission is done through the buildings. 40% of the raw material use of the complete raw material present in US, 40% is used up for our buildings, construction. 24 to 50% of the energy is used through our buildings. 72% of the electrical consumption is done through our buildings, buildings that we architects, designers design. So, by definition, if you go by, sustainability is the ability of the current generation. Actually, we were talking about the sustainability. If you talk into the definition of that, it is sustainability is the ability of the current generation to meet its own needs without actually compromising the ability of future generation to meet their needs. What do we understand by this is that Whatever we come up with the development for today, it should be responding for at least one or two generations ahead. It should be a futuristic and holistic approach now because we, had, we have had a good amount of conventional buildings in, even in our country. So now we need to respond better because all these environmental pollution related uh, Difficulties are now coming up, getting rised up into the world. So we need to answer those things. With the projected pollution growth coupled with the vast amount of resources that our building consumes, we are actually going to have to get a lot smarter about how 
we built. Since we are actually using vast amount of resources, especially for our construction industry and to the buildings, we need to come smarter how to utilize all these things, how to optimize the things, how to do everything. Okay. The goal of sustainable design or green design, you can say, is to create high performance buildings that results in minimal environmental impact. As I have talked earlier, we need to have minimal environmental impact through our building onto the environment. Reduce infrastructure and efficient building operation. We need to reduce the building operation analysis has to be done and optimization of those analysis has to be done. Green buildings lead to increased facility assets, increased worker productivity and reduction in risk management. Risk management is a very important or vital option aspect. So all these will be answered to our green building guidelines and techniques we'll be learning. In the US, the federal and state and local governments are actually adopting more sustainable building practices. Government agencies, utility companies and manufacturers increasingly offer financial incentives to developers and owners to enhance the environmental performance of their building. They're coming up with, you can say, offers. If you are having your building with the guidelines of all the environmental aspects, then these organizations are now coming up with aids to motivate you up. So these are actually very good steps to motivate the designers, motivate the construction field persons to work more into green buildings and conserve our energy our resources and our environment. And there are a few studies on green building performance that show substantial average savings. It's like improvements like 13% lower maintenance cost. Any building after designing process, after construction need maintenance on a regular basis. You can say on a very daily basis. In that annual conserve that we have done annual saving that we do on an average is 13% for the maintenance cost that was occurring as compared to the conventional one. 26% less energy uses. There are 26% less amount of energy that we use. A reduction of 26% is a good amount. 27% of higher levels of occupant satisfaction means you provide them such an ambience that they are feeling very comfortable they are having good environment cozy environment in their dwellings and they are very much satisfied the way they are occupying the house and that is 27 percent 33 percent of the lower carbon dioxide emission carbon dioxide emission also is lowered by 33% when we follow the complete guidelines set by green buildings organization. Those come up with the green building ratings. So we'll be touching why we actually need green buildings. What are the things that we need to know about green buildings? So we'll be touching about them after a short break of five minutes. We'll be getting back at 10.35 with second session link.